don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I'm jumping straight into my project today. So this is one of the few remaining pages left in my Dina Wakely multi-surface journal. Um, and I'm going to create an art journal page on this, um, on this white side here. Not the fabric side because they're not the most easy to work with. Um, but I'm going to do it on this one. So what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is I've been looking back at some of my earlier art journals and art journal pages and I've gone right back to where I first started with the collage and creating composite images for collage. So I've created this little beauty this morning. So um, I'm going to use her in my art journal page today but as I normally do I create the composite first and then I blow it apart so you've got all the individual pieces and then I add in some quotes and phrases for good measure. So um, so you've got the choice to either use the composite version. This is a digi download that's available on my website now if you want to purchase that and download it and have a go at doing this yourself. Um, so you've got the full composite image there, you can just have to cut out and then use that directly straight into your art journal page. But if you're like me and you like the um, act of cutting out and sticking down and creating the layers to create your image, then you've got those two. So they're available there on the website right this minute. There will be a clickable link in the description area below so you can just click it and go straight across if you want to. So first thing I'm going to do before I even cut all this stuff out is I'm going to create my background. So like I said before, going right back to my roots, um, I'm going to just go over the page with some gesso, first of all, some white gesso just so that I've got some easy kind of like work time to be able to add some colour on the background. Now the last time I used one of these pages and didn't use gesso, and I think it was on the Mona Lisa page, because it was a, a watercolour um, art journal page that I was doing, um, the colour of the water from the watercolour just soaked straight in and the paper started to pill really really badly. Um, and I since found out from somebody who left a comment, I'm sorry I can't remember who it was that left the comment, um, they said that this journal, the paper contained in this journal, doesn't contain any size, so that's why it's pilling. So there you go, I didn't know that. So, but I have to say though, it hadn't really happened previously and I've done a lot of pages in this journal, hence the reason why it's nearly full. Um, and it's never really been a problem before, but hey ho. Okay, so that's the gesso done. So I forgot to get some water. Right, I need to go sort out a water pot. <laughs> get this page dry and then I'll be right back. The gesso on the page is now dry. So I've grabbed some of my Dina Wakely paints. So I've just gone into the blues and the greens because that's prim prim primarily the colours that I'm playing with. So we've got turquoise, there doesn't appear to be a lot left in that one. We've got sky, which there does, and lime, and evergreen I think that's called. And just for good measure I've got peacock, just because um, and yes, I've got a baby wipe. This is just a barely wet baby wipe. Even if you squeeze really hard, no water comes out of it. There's very, very little in there at all. So it's just sort of damp. And that's how I'm going to apply the paint um, down onto my art journal today. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of that blue at the top. That's the sky, as in the sky paint. And then I'm just going to take the baby wipe, just kind of make a ball, and then I'm going to start to wipe that paint into the page. Now, if I tried to do this just with um, without putting the gesso down, it wouldn't have gone very far. <laughs> So just 
give that a bit of a wipe and then I can add my second colour which is going to be that darker peacock just across there like that grab the same wipe and I'm just going to start kind of like working it into the page I have gone over a little bit of that, alright, don't mind that Okay, so grab a bit of that sky again. Just put a little bit there. And then I can just grab hold of and we can just start blending. Add a little bit more. And you can see I've just scraped the page with the nozzle of the paint pot and as you can see because of that gesso it literally just scrapes straight off so I'm creating this kind of ombre effect coming down the page there we go. so I've got that nice kind of bluey um, greeny kind of colour. I've got paint all over my fingers. Messy fingers. Haven't had that for a while. What fun. Okay so before this actually dries and it is a very very warm day today. We've got the doors open. Mr Bentley's out there lounging in the sun in between coming in for to play with Teddy. Um, I've got a couple of stencils. Some older stencils. So this one is called arabesque so I'm going to lay that down just on the table on the table on the page there like that and I'm going to ghost so I'm going to grab another baby wipe just the one that I've used to dry my fingers I'm just going to lift some of that paint up and over here And again, just down here a little bit. And I can do this because of that gesso. If I hadn't have used the gesso, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Okay, so we've got that. So I'm going to dry that off, clean my hands up. Another wet wipe. There we go. Go through these like I don't know what. Anyway, I think we had a baby. Right. Hands clean, yes. Let's get this dried off and I'll be back. The blue's now completely dry, so I'm going to come back in with that lime green now. Just give that bottle a bit of a shake. You'll notice that my craft mat's disappeared. Um, don't really need it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the lime green down on my mat. I've got a... Um, just a little sponge that I've cut into a wedge, just like a bird's beak. Um, and I'm just going to load that sponge up with the paint. There you go. And then I've got another of my stencils here. This is a bubble wrap. So I'm going to just lay that across the top and I'm going to just sponge through. Just in those areas where we don't have any of the ghost in. And just bring that through towards the end, the edge of the page I should say. And I'm just going to do a little bit down here. And I'm sticking to just the number threes today. So just doing that rule of three just as it starts to run out so that's fine creating that visual triangle on the page so we've got the three areas of white and that three areas of green that kind of help to draw your eye around the page 
Okay, so that was arabesque, and that's bubble wrap. Okay, so just get rid of that little bit of paint there, and then we can move on, dry this off, and I'll be right back. Those layers are now completely dry, so we've got four layers on that page already. So we've got the gesso, the blue and peacock paint, then we've got the ghost in, the arabesque ghost in, and then the fourth layer of the lime green paint with that bubble wrap stencil. So four layers already. We're going to be going a few minutes. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do then is I want to have a look at these collage elements. So what I want to try and do is I'm going to cut these out. So I'm going to be cutting out everything pretty much that you can see here, and I'll just put it together as you see her there. Um, may use this heart, but it will definitely use these kind of cloud um, structures here, and maybe a little bit of this fur washi tape over here as well. There's two lots, obviously, the, the same kind of pattern that's on the dress, um, but also we've got that checkerboard pattern there as well, which is also on that little trim there. But um, I might use that for some borders a little bit later on. So first things first, I need to get all this lot cut out and then I'll be back. And as you can tell, I've just used ordinary printer paper. Um, just bog standard, um, bog standard thickness. Haven't got any kind of thicker cardstock on this. It's just ordinary, ordinary paper. So I will whiz away, cut out, and then I'll be back in a few minutes. Well, it'll be more than a few minutes for me, but for you, probably just less than 10 seconds, that is. All my bits are now cut out. Now, I would have gone round all the edges with a pen, just to get rid of those raw white edges. Um, but unfortunately, it's been that long since I've done one of these type of collage pages that I can't find my pen. Um, I think because it was a black one, uh, somebody mentioning no names has borrowed it and just forgot to bring it back. But hey ho, it don't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building up the collage um, as a cluster. I'm not going to start sticking it directly down to the page. I'm going to start building it um, in its component bits. So the base bits are there along with the, the kind of dress form. And then we've got our face. And yes, it is Twiggy, just in case you were wondering. Um, so what I'll do is I will just add little bit of glue just on the bottom there just to kind of secure it in place. There we go, let's just tilt her a little bit. Okay now we've got that I can add a little bit of glue just on those wings just so that we know and also using this kind of spirit glue um, gives me just a tad of wiggle room. There we go, just like that. So that gives us just that little bit amount of time just to kind of tilt the wings, move them up a little bit, just get them how we kind of want them to be before it kind of grabs. And then I shall just glue on the decoration for the belt, or the trim on the, the kind of dress. Now that can go across there like that. And then I can grab the legs. And I always find, well, sort of dry fitting all the elements kind of helps also with the composition because you can move it around the page a bit you can audition it as we say I know some people find the, the use of the word audition in this instance to be quite funny but you know you can position it around you can test it where you want it to be um, right so next off we'll do 
the act. There we go. So she can go up there like so. And then we've got the arms. So I'll just do a bead of glue along the arms there. I'm not totally bothered about where they're going to sit, but that'll do. Kind of enclosed within. So, so I apologise if you can hear some ambient noise, voices from outside, but it's one of those really warm June days again today. So all the windows are open, all the neighbours are out in the gardens, and none of them have got any idea of how the voices carry. So, right. Particularly when they're set out in the gardens at half past 11 at night. But hey ho. These are the crosses. <laughs> so I'll stick that like that. So we've got the heart just on the breast there. Okay, so that's pretty much the components for her. I am aware I've got the drag queen's eyes to go on just yet, um, but I also want to just stick this little flying heart together as well, which is a bit of a bonus component. So a bit of glue on there, a bit of glue on there. And again, we can just audition those. I think that's pretty much it really, isn't it? That's going to go just nicely up there. I think actually that's grabbed already. <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. Just took it under a little bit. That'll do. Okay, so now I've got that in place. I'm happy with the positioning of all the pieces. I can now just start sticking down some of the background pieces. So we've got these little bit of cloud kind of structures up here. So again, just add some glue. I have got some dry glue sticks, but I'm going to keep on using the wet until it runs out. Okay, so. Let's move that out of the way. That can stick up there like that. And then now that we've got that down, we can add some more on the back of here. over. So as I was saying I went back to um, watching some of the really early YouTube videos that I started watching when I first started out journaling. So people like um, Tisha Moore um, and um, CC's Creations um, right back in the early in the early days like five six seven years ago um, and realized that you know, I did things a lot different back then and I kind of forgot, not necessarily how to do it, but I forgot, you know, what kind of like made the bare bones of art journal pages, you know, and learning, for me anyway, what my style was. Because I went through quite a lot of different kind of um, iterations of what I thought my style was back in the day. Um, so I had to, um, if you'll pardon the expression, kiss a lot of frogs before I found my prints, um, as far as art journaling is concerned. You know, I tried all kinds of um, white space kind of art journal pages and I tried doing it Franz Papillon way and all that kind of thing. Um, but none of them really struck as much as kind of the Tisha Moore style. 
So that's kind of where I've got gone back to for this one. So right. And I had no idea, even to this day, or until a week or so ago anyway, um that there was a particular name for this kind of style. Um you know, kind of adopted by the likes of Diane Reevely and and quite a few other people. You know, the, the putting the collage pieces together uh, made up from you know different animals and textures and cut out paper piece shapes and that kind of thing. I didn't realise it had or had been given <laughs> its own kind of style name, which I thought was quite funny. So even after all this time I'm still learning something new. There we go. So there she is, my Zetiology figure. Yeah, there's the name. Right, so drag queen eyes. It just looks so much better with them on. <laughs> Poor Twiggy. <laughs> So I suppose you could say that this is almost like a back to basics uh, journal page. I'm just going to line the ridge of the nose up. Of course, if you don't like the eyebrows of the drag queen, you can always just cut it off there. Um, these are actually the, the eyes of a man. There you go. Although you'd never know it. You just can't tell these days. Okay, so the quote I'm going to use is this one. Being unique is better than being perfect. There are a few others on the on the sheet. Embrace your crazy, limited edition. Life is too short to be normal and rare and unique. I've included those onto the kit as well, so you can have a bash at those if you want to, or add your own, obviously. I'm not gonna come and complain at you if you don't use any of the ones that I've done. I think I've run out of glue. In fact, you can always just mix and match with any of your own stuff that you've got already if you wanted to. Just add it to your collection of bits to use. So, where's the quote going to go? I should have got my tweezers out to do this. Right, so, I think we'll do it over here. So being unique is better than being perfect. And let's just do it at a jaunty angle, just like that. Okay, so now that we've done this, I am going to have to find a pen, because I will want to do just a little bit of line work. And I'm also going to do just a tad of stamping. I think what I might do is I might use a Stabilo or pencil. If I can find it again, there it is. So that probably will get used. Now, what did I do with a pin? There it is. Right, I'm going to leave my glue bits to stick just for a moment, and then I'll be right back. Right, so I'm just going to jump back in again, just as I'm cutting out these kind of border strips. So these are kind of faux washi tape. Um, so as I said earlier, I used the same material or the same fabric kind of pattern as the dress there um, and also the same checker pattern as in that bit at the bottom there. Um, obviously bigger, bigger patterns, bigger areas. Um, just it over there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding just a little bit of this down here. Uh, as a kind of um, washi pattern. And I'm just going to tear it, grab one of those diary glue sticks. And just do that. And I can start just adding a little bit of a, a border. And I'm going to try and sort of mirror what I'm doing. Um, 
top and bottom and maybe down one side. And then let's tear a small piece. Like so, and then flip that. Just add it as a little bit of an accent. A little border element. Just kind of breaks it up a little bit and then Another piece there, because there will always be those that say, oh, it didn't need it, didn't need it at all. You're probably right. But, you know, we do tend to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at these pages. So, you know, it might not need it, but hey -ho. It's all part of the fun. Just like that. And then we'll just have a small bit there. And I think we're probably done for that anyway. Right, so I did find a pen. I found a Pigma Micron. This one's a PN. Whatever that means, something nib, probably polymer nib. Doesn't actually say what the PN actually means anywhere. But hey ho. So this usually does kind of write on almost anything. So again, it's going to be one of those situations where people are going to scream, no, don't do it. But do you know what? I'm going to anyway. Just kind of help to unify everything on the page. Almost like it was meant to be. Now there are black lines on here anyway, so that doesn't really matter. But. You can always go back around and just kind of reinforce them. And then I don't mind if I go over. doesn't bother me. One little bit and I am getting lost in the process again as you can probably tell because I'm I keep stopping talking. But that's half the fun isn't it? Getting lost in the process. And of course, going around everything with a black line, it's just, just like when we were kids and would go and do like our colouring books and that kind of thing. Because everything would have a black line around it. But of course, you can always go in and enhance by adding in you know, a few little bit of, bits of extra detail. Um, if you wanted to, you could actually go and go around your washi tape. Um, but you know, it's entirely up to you how far you want to go with your uh, edge, your edging, if you want to put edging on at all. It really is 
entirely up to you. But sometimes it can be quite fun just to go back around just reinforce all those lines just kind of take that um, paper print all the printed paper kind of look away from it when you've got hand detailing it just looks a lot better I think sometimes in fact we've got that there Let's put that away and the lid is there right, so where's that Stabilo all pencil here we go so I'm just going to go just around that block that's going to help to blend the white edge of that paper as well and this is a watercolour pencil so we can come back in at a later date if I wanted to and add some watercolour um, shading underneath like the clouds here I can activate that no problem later on back with the pen and then start going around the heart just helps to make everything pop I think maybe this pen's now running out on so its last legs. <laughs> I'll just flip it upside down just quickly. I'm sure if I actually went looking, I might even be able to find another pen somewhere. But it doesn't have to be anything particularly you know special you don't have to go rushing out and buy you know a really expensive pen and um, probably just a plain old biro would probably do the trick in fact have I got one that I can show you yes I have here look so let's just add some here we go you see what I mean add some more lines in on the wings so just a bog standard biro will work just as well on doing a page like that and I think actually I think I'm done and um, I don't think I want to do anything else with this so I'm going to just quickly sign it and put today's date well actually yeah today's date since this is Monday so it's the 20th of the 7th 22 and look at that I finished just as Ian and Mr Bentley come back from the WALK. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this um, Zettiology style Tisha Moore kind of inspired uh, art journal page. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible and don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website there's a link in the description area below thank you